Welcome into Dallas Mavericks today by Chat Sports. I am your host, Chase Senior. Give me a follow and hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at Chase underscore Senior. Let's get into the latest Dallas Mavericks news and rumors. And of course, we've talked a lot about Laurie Markinen here on the channel, but there's some new, fresh reporting to get to from Tim Cato of The Athletic. According to reports from Cato, last week from Mark Stein, Mavs really interested in Laurie Markinen, who's a restricted free agent. And Dallas has a trade exception worth about $11 million. So possibly they'd be able to bring in Markin and salary and pay him over the next couple of seasons. But what Chicago is doing right now is really weird because they're holding out hopes for a sign and trade. Yet Markinen is a restricted free agent, and they haven't matched any of the offers that have gone out there for Markinen. So there's a little bit of a standstill going on between Markinen's camp and they requested a trade out of Chicago, as well as the Chicago Bulls organization who were really, really busy throughout free agency and don't have room for Markinen on this roster. I think Markinen has a lot of modern day value because he's a big guy who can shoot. And also he's still really young in his mid twenties. The problem with him has been injuries. The last three years, he has missed at least 20 games in each of those campaigns. But when he's been on the floor, he's shown flashes of becoming and being a very productive player at the four or five spot, depending on which lineup you're going up against. 13 and a half points per game last year in under 30 games. He was able to contribute a little more than five rebounds. So not the greatest rebounder for his size. We're talking more about a stretch big who likes to hover around the three point arc. And speaking of the three point arc, Markinen for a big man closing in on seven feet, 40% from distance last year and shot 48% from the field. I spoke about that report from Cato on The Athletic about the kind of joining forces between Markinen wanting to go to Dallas and Dallas maybe wanting Markinen. Here's what Cato had to say on The Athletic. Dallas would love to convince Markinen to sign under his market value. And what is market value if the market hasn't provided him the $15 million annually that he had hoped for and fit him into the team's $11 million traded player exception, which we spoke about here. Cato saying, I've heard Chicago has interest in Maxi Kleber. It's a riskier deal for Dallas, giving up both a rotational player and signing Markinen to a higher salary point. It might be worthwhile. It might be a worthwhile gamble, though. Although you would have to really talk me into it. Kleber has been the better player in past seasons, or at least the more useful one for a team with postseason aspirations. I actually disagree with Cato in saying that Kleber has been the better player. <clears throat> he certainly fit well on this Mavericks roster, and him, like Markinen, a big guy who can stretch the floor, open up some floor spacing for drivers like Luka Doncic to get to the cup and also be a reliable marksman from deep. But his numbers, not even close, really, from a production standpoint to Laurie Markinen. Seven points per game last year, five rebounds. So the points per game and the rebounds per game, very productive numbers there. He shot around 42% from the field and 41% from distance. So both with Kleber and Markinen, you're looking at two guys who can stretch the floor and as big guys knock down threes and be reliable in doing so. But there's no doubt, I think, that Kleber is the better defensive player than Markinen. And also there's this, I'm not sure how well Markinen would fit on the Mavericks alongside Kristaps Porzingis because both of those guys have a lot of similarities and both of those guys have the tendency to be somewhat inconsistent night in and night out. Grade the player that Laurie Markinen is right now. I know Bulls fans have gone back and forth with this as an outsider, as a Mavericks fan, Mavs fans for life, stand up. Speak up on this in the comments section, A, B, C, D, or F. Get your votes in and let me know what you think about Laurie Markkinen as a player right now. Speaking of the MFFLs, hey, this is why you subscribe, because here on Mavericks Today by Chat Sports, we bring you the latest Mavericks news and rumors, and anything that happens with your squad, we have you covered. NBA free agency, NBA draft, NBA offseason, NBA in-season, Year-round Mavericks coverage. Smash that subscribe button down below or go to youtube.com slash Mavs TV. We're back pushing out multiple Mavs videos every single week, and nobody's doing what we're doing here at Chat Sports. Let's do a little Dallas Mavericks Summer League roundup. And from a win-loss standpoint, 
Mavericks haven't fared well in the Las Vegas Summer League, have not won a game yet, and some of their young pieces who they wanted to get an eye on and watch them develop and make some progress during Summer League haven't really played. Tyrell Terry injured his groin in the early going. Josh Green has been held out. Josh Green did play well for Team Australia throughout the Olympics and displayed a little bit of potential there. But a guy who has shown some ability and I think has maybe the potential to make the back half of the roster is Eugene Omarui, a guy who went to Rutgers to start his college career, then went to Oregon, and Tim Cato had some interesting, dis uh, interesting things to say about Omarui, uh, saying this, he's the only remaining player worth watching from a team-centric perspective. I heard there was an expectation early in the summer league he would be the team's second two-way player, something uh, which was formalized on Friday, excuse me, when the team announced that he had been signed. Omarui on his game compared himself to some pretty solid players in the NBA, saying this, I feel like I'm positionless, which is obviously really important in today's NBA. I feel like I can do a lot of the things to find my guys, shoot, dribble the ball up the court, run the play. When it comes to defense, I'll pick up anybody full court. I just I do on both ends of the floor out there. I see myself as being me. And Omarui did get thrown out of the Maverick Summer League game against the Kings on Sunday. I think he like took a punch to the face or something ridiculous like that. But his on-court production, the talent and the potential have certainly been on display for the Dallas Mavericks in a summer league stint that's been pretty lackluster because, like I said, a lot of the young players not playing and a lot of the other guys, journeyman NBA players who have no realistic shot at cracking the Mavericks roster. Eugene, last year with Oregon after transferring there to the Fighting Ducks from Rutgers, put up very, very good numbers. 17 points per game, five and a half rebounds. He shot around 47% from the floor and a little less than 38% from long range. And I think he said some interesting things in speaking to Tim Cato of The Athletic, basically saying, hey, you know, I compare myself to guys like Jay Crowder. I'm positionless. I can guard multiple positions offensively. If you ask me and task me to do a couple of different things, I have no problem doing that because I can do it here at the professional level, but I've also done that at Rutgers as well as uh, with Oregon, with bringing the ball up, finding guys on backdoor cuts. If you want to plug me down low, I'm big enough to do that as well, or I can stretch the floor and bang down some threes. So do you think that Omarui has a chance to make the Mavs roster? Type Y for yes, type N for no. Mavs fans, stand up. Sound off in the comments section. This is a young player who I'm somewhat intrigued by because he's provided highlights during Summer League when other guys haven't. Let me know. Type Y for yes, type N for no. Get those votes in.